Hi, I'm Kirsten Tibbles and I'm going to be creating for you a spectacular Christmas dessert which has got chocolate, chocolate, chocolate and raspberry. I'm going to start with the chocolate sponge. Now with the chocolate sponge you can do it by hand but you need to have a bionic arm and I don't have that so I'm actually going to use a mixer. We're going to place whole eggs in. Eggs are always better and they'll aerate more if they're at room temperature, so don't use them straight from the fridge. The older they are, the better as well. That's a little secret. We're going to combine that with some sugar and some vanilla bean paste. Vanilla beans are super expensive at the moment, so I've switched to paste, but you can use the beans as well. They're interchangeable. So this has the little seeds in it, which is what you're looking for. I really love vanilla. Now we're going to whisk this on high speed until it becomes really light and creamy, create a really good foam or in the old fashioned way, or as my mum used to say, we used to make a figure eight. So it would hold a figure eight when you stop mixing. Exactly what we're looking for. Here's my tray here. So it's a baking tray with sides. I've cut a piece of baking paper so that's going to fit in and I've just cut the corners so it folds in nicely. You can either spray it with some oil, I'm going to brush it with some oil so that the baking paper will actually stick. You don't have to be too precise with this, just make sure you get the sides as well. Placing it in. I've sieved all the dry ingredients already, but I am going to sieve them together before folding them through. So we have some flour, just some plain flour or purpose flour. Some cocoa powder. Now cocoa powder, I use a Dutch processed cocoa powder. So you can see that beautiful rich dark brown color and that's because they add a little bit of alkaline to it, but it makes it nicer in cakes as well. If you use a non-Dutch cocoa powder, it'd be really pale in color. And a little bit of salt. I'm going to lightly sieve that in. Then I'm going to gently fold that through. So using a flexible spatula, go right underneath and lift it up until we say it's clear or all the dry ingredients are incorporated. This is a great vanilla sponge as well. If you want to replace a cocoa powder with flour, you can just make a plain vanilla one. Who doesn't like chocolate though? I almost always forget the butter. I don't know why, but it's right there in front of me. So we've got melted butter. We're going to put a tiny bit of mixture in. Pick the smallest bowl possible to melt the butter in. And we're going to mix that first and then it'll be easier to combine. I know that's a tiny bit of butter. So you will use a bigger bowl than what I have. This just means all the butter's not going to run to the bottom of the bowl. Place that in. So the butter's gonna make the sponge a little bit more moist and a little bit heavier, not quite as light as a sponge without it. You can't let this sit on the bench before pouring it in because it will start to collapse. Don't like to leave anything in the bowl for anyone to eat. I scrape absolutely everything out. It'll look like I've licked the bowl clean. Now I've preset my oven at 165 degrees Celsius. Now every oven is different, but 165 is a great starting point, but the time it takes to bake may vary a little bit. I'm using what we call a pallet knife and I love a stepped or an angled pallet knife, but you can actually spread this out with a normal butter knife if you want to. The most important thing is that you don't work it too much because you'll knock out the air and you want it as even as possible so when it bakes, it doesn't burn one side and the other part is raw. So how this actually rises is that when we place a sponge in the oven, all that air that we've incorporated will expand as we heat it and it lifts it up. And it's a gluten in the flour that actually sets it and holds that air once we actually lift it up. And it's going to bake for 10 to 15 minutes. Really depends on your oven as to how long it's going to take. Sponge is ready. You can see when I touch it, it bounces right back, but you should check it before you take it out of the oven. Now I'm going to move this, pick it up by the baking paper onto a cooling rack. Once it's completely cool, I'm going to place it into the freezer for about an hour. So then it's really easy to cut. I'm going to cut it in rectangles, five by six centimeters. Now I have created more sponge than what I actually need because it's difficult to whisk up less eggs than I did. 
but you can just freeze the remainder for a rainy day when you've got friends coming over at the last minute and you can make up a quick, easy dessert. The sponge is frozen. I'm going to turn it out onto a chopping board. What I love about this Christmas dessert is that all the elements can be made in advance and then can be assembled just a few hours prior to serving. So I'm going to do this, stolen my son's ruler, four centimetres by five. So I'm going to mark that. I'm going to cut them each individually because I find it's easier than marking because you can never ever find the lines again. Before we measure the other way, I'm just going to trim the edge. Now I won't judge if you eat the off cuts. I'm going to cut them five centimetres this way. Now I'm using a special mould. You can simply make this in a baking tray if you want to and once it's frozen you can cut it into individual portions. If you're going to do that you're going to use a sponge as a sheet not as individual rectangles. Okay we've got all the bases. So once the bases are cut and ready to go you can start with the chocolate mousse. Now this chocolate mousse recipe is beautiful, but because we're making a small individual cake with it, I need the gelatin to help set it. I'm gonna semi whip the cream next, which means we whip it 75% of the way. Make sure the cream is always really cold or else it'll separate quite easily. Remember, don't ever whip it. Now this is what semi-whipped is. If we have a look, it's got some body, but it still collapses, so it doesn't actually hold, which it's got enough air to make our mousse light. If I whip it much more than that, we're going to separate the cream. Now the mousse is egg-free, which is fantastic. We're gonna place water, sugar, glucose. I'm gonna bring this to a boil just until the sugar's dissolved. As Soon as you take that off the stove, add in the pre-soaked gelatin. Once that gelatin's melted, pour it directly over the chocolate. And I know for sure that you're gonna buy absolutely exceptional quality chocolate. Makes a difference. If you're using a block, finely chop it, or you can simply use buttons. Whisk until all the chocolate's melted, and then we're gonna fold through the semi-whipped cream. Add a little bit of cream first. We quite often use dark chocolate for mousses because we add additional sugar to it. If we use milk chocolate, it would be a little bit sweet. So adding in the remaining cream, it's really important that this is still really cold, so don't leave it sitting on the bench while you make the chocolate base. Just mix it until it's all combined so you don't separate it. If you keep working it, you'll separate the butter and water which are present in the cream. Have a look at that. Now stop distracting you with the beautiful texture of my mousse because we need to use this straight away before it starts to set. I'm using a really lovely mold, which I thought looked like a sleigh, which inspired this dish. But as I said, you can make this mousse in a full sheet in a baking dish and then cut it into individual squares. Then you would just put some raspberries in the center as I'm gonna do and a sheet of sponge on the base, freeze it, and then cut it into rectangles before glazing it. So I'm very fortunate to have this beautiful mold. You can use any shape that you want with this mousse, and I won't be offended if you make this at another time of the year, not Christmas, because it's a great dessert. So I'm gonna spoon this in. You can also pipe it. Spoon a little bit in first. And then we spread it up the sides of the mold to ensure that we don't get any air bubbles. Don't lick the spoon as you go. So just a little bit more in that one. So fill it up about halfway. I've got beautiful fresh raspberries. I'm gonna place half a raspberry inside each of our desserts. I might actually go all out and place a whole raspberry in. I'm just tearing them in half. We're gonna put a little bit more mousse on top and then we're gonna finish it with a piece of sponge. We're gonna place the sponge in skin side up and then just gently press it down. We're gonna scrape off any excess mousse 
So when you press the sponge down, it'll push out any excess so it's nice and flat before we place it into the freezer. We'll continue until the tray is full. So I'm going to make 15 individual desserts, but at Christmas time you always have a lot of people coming over, so it's better to have more than less. Now we're ready to place these in the freezer, preferably for 24 hours, but I'll let you get away with six. Just check one to make sure it comes out of the mold cleanly before you prepare for glazing. We're at the stage of making the glaze. Now this can be made well and truly in advance. You can make it up to three months in advance and store it in the freezer, or a week earlier and store it in the fridge and simply reheat it in the microwave. To start, we're going to soak the gelatin in water. This is gold gelatin sheets. So we place one at a time into the water. Make sure your water's really cold. If it's even slightly warm, the gelatin will melt. This is what makes the glaze so shiny is because we have a lot of water and we set it with gelatin. Where years and years ago, I'm not that old, we used to actually set it with chocolate and chocolate makes the glaze go dull if you add too much. Make sure all the ends are wet. So I just fold it over a few times and you can leave that in there for a few minutes just until the gelatin becomes soft and pliable. We always make more glaze than we actually need because we need enough that it runs over the product and we catch what comes underneath and we can reuse it. We're going to set the gelatin aside. Now for the glaze itself, in a saucepan you're going to place water, sugar, glucose. Now a little trick with glucose is you should heat it in the microwave for about 10-15 seconds. It comes up so easily. You can get glucose from the supermarket now, so it's quite easy to obtain. This is going to help with the shine. Glucose is a sugar made from wheat, but it has absolutely no gluten in it whatsoever. I'm going to bring this to a boil just until the sugar's dissolved, and then I'm going to add in the condensed milk. Now the gelatin has soaked for long enough. Generally the time it takes you to do your sugar syrup base and add the condensed milk, this will be pliable enough. Just not too tightly, but just gently squeeze out the excess water. Then we add that in. So gelatin will melt if the temperature is above 28 degrees, but you never want to boil gelatin because it starts to lose its setting ability. Once the gelatin's melted, we're going to pour it over some white chocolate. Try to use good quality white chocolate. You'll thank me later. Emulsify it or mix it. Emulsify is a fancy word for mixing with a stick blender. Always keep it submerged so that you don't incorporate air bubbles. We're going to add a little bit of color actually quite a bit because I want a really bright red. Now, some colors are quite weak. So if you get color from the supermarket, to be honest, it's not going to be great. And you're going to need to add a lot of color to actually make it red. And you're going to dilute the glaze and make it all watery. So try to use a gel or a paste. So you only need to add a little bit to get a really nice red, vibrant color. Look at that. Now this is a beautiful bright red colour, but if you want a richer, deeper red, a little trick is to add a little bit of Dutch cocoa powder to it. Now I'm going to cool this down to 31 degrees Celsius while it's got plastic wrap on the surface. And you must make sure your mousse is frozen before you actually glaze it. You can make the garnishes in advance and set them aside as long as your room temperature doesn't exceed 24 to 25 degrees Celsius. So I've got a piece of baking paper here. You get that off the roll. I'm going to fold it in half. So I start with about 40 centimetres in length. Cut it in half. So I've got a rectangle. Then what we do with the rectangle is I fold it across until I have a right angle here. Once you've got a right angle, crease it and then cut it. And these are going to be paper piping bags, or you could simply just use a Ziploc bag as well. With these, we're going to roll them into a bag or a cone. So we take one side and we roll it in. Hold that with your left thumb. We take this side. It's easier if the paper's not creased. Fold it over. 
Make sure the piece you're holding with your left thumb doesn't slide in. And we move this one on the outside with the finger, you can see that there, to close the tip. Once you've got a closed point here, we fold that over and crease it to ensure that it's not gonna come apart here. And that's how you create a piping cone. I've got some white chocolate here. Now I'm using chocolate that contains cocoa butter. When we use chocolate that contains cocoa butter and we're not mixing it with other ingredients, you do need to temper it, but it's not a bad chocolate for you. Where the alternative, the chocolate has vegetable fat, which is really bad for your health and it's not great eating quality. To temper this, you're going to ignore my glass bowl. I'm doing that so you can see what I'm doing and you're going to use a plastic bowl. We're going to melt it in the microwave in 30 second increments. It's really important that you stir it in between until it's half liquid, half solid chocolate. I think we're almost there. I think we need maybe another 10 seconds or so in the microwave. Now you'll find the template for the sides of your sleigh with the recipe so you can print that out. Place on top a piece of baking paper. We're going to fill the paper piping cone with chocolate. Make sure there's not a hole in the end before you start, otherwise you're going to have to re-roll it and fold it again. When you fill your bag, don't fill it more than halfway. We do have a tempering video on YouTube, which is fantastic if you're wanting to go right in depth and know when your chocolate's tempered. I know mine's tempered because I work with it all the time, but you can also do a test by dipping a plastic scraper or a piece of baking paper in the chocolate. White chocolate takes 10 minutes to set, milk chocolate takes seven, and dark chocolate takes five minutes to set. And that's at room temperature. Don't place it in the fridge because that's cheating and it will set, but it might not be ready. If it doesn't set, you need to add a few more buttons of chocolate and give it another good stir. I'm gonna cut the end of the bag now. Don't cut it too small because if these are too fine, you won't be able to pick them up and put them on the side of your dessert. Here we go. This is what we call drop line. This might be a little bit tricky, but I've got faith in you. So don't touch the bag to the paper. Let the chocolate drop out and follow the lines. It's just like coloring in. If you really mess it up, once it sets, eat it and do another one. Then we move the baking paper so we can pipe some more the other way. Let these set, but as soon as they set, you need to put another sheet of baking paper on top and sandwich them between two light trays. Otherwise, as the chocolate contracts, it will start to curve up a little bit. With your leftover chocolate, put it in opaque packaging if you can, so that it's not affected by light, and then you can simply remelt it the next time you're gonna use it. I've let my glaze cool at room temperature. Now it's a little bit cold. You want it to be around 28 to 31 degrees Celsius. But what you've got to keep in mind is we're going to mix it again with a stick blender. Now when you mix it again with the stick blender, it does heat it up a little bit. If you're not going to heat it with a stick blender, you're going to use it when it's exactly at the right temperature. So I'm going to make sure that's completely submerged. Otherwise I'm going to incorporate a lot of air. Now you're not meant to have favorites, but my favorite is a bar mix because I find a lot of the other stick blenders do actually incorporate air bubbles. The trick to eliminate air bubbles in your glaze is to actually use a stick blender without pulling the blade out so you've got movement on the surface of the glaze. So exactly like this. And as you can see, air bubble free. Make sure your product is frozen when your glaze is ready, otherwise it'll become too soft to remove it from the rack. And as you can see, I've set up a cake wire and I've got a little silica mat underneath, but you can just use a tray and line it with plastic wrap, ready to catch the glaze. Now I'm only glazing three just to give you an example. Once you take your desserts out of the freezer, they may get a little bit of condensation or ice on the surface. Just brush that off with your fingers before you pour the glaze on. If there's a layer of water in between the mousse and the glaze, the glaze will actually slide off. I'm gonna put the glaze into a jug to make it easier to pour. Look at that. 
I don't know if it's a good thing if you really love what you create yourself, is that bad? Just give them another little rub to make sure there's no more condensation. Now, normally you'd have someone on the other side, but it's you behind the camera to tell me if I've missed a spot. So I'm gonna put a little bit of extra glaze on to make sure I haven't. Make sure you cover all the corners. It's important not to go back over now because the gelatin is starting to set immediately because the product is frozen. If I go to put another layer of glaze on now, I'll get a really uneven finish. So all the glaze that we've got there on the tray, we can simply scrape up, put into an airtight container and freeze it for three months and then reheat it in the microwave before we use it again. We just now wait until the desserts stop dripping before we pick them up, scrape off all the drips and then we're going to place them onto our serving plate. Okay, lifting it off here. This is a stressful part. No, it's not really stressful. Just need to have steady hands. Once you place it on your plate, it's best not to move it because it is going to leave a mark. I'm going to go for an angle and just put one knife underneath. Here we go, second one. Make sure I've got the angles there correct. Spacing. Now I have only glazed three, not all 15, because I'm saving the rest for Christmas Day. I'm going to scrape up the excess glaze and then just prior to serving, we're going to place the chocolate sides on. Now the chocolate sides I have already created. I did put a tray on top so they would stay nice and flat. I'm gonna place those on. You can lift them up with a little knife or you can peel back the paper. Always make a few spares of these. I'm not saying they're gonna break, but they might. I would make say 10 extra if you're gonna do all 15 individual desserts. So peel the paper back. You can release them all first. I like to put them flat side out and we're going to center that on. This is going to make it instantly very Christmassy. So we go one side on, match it up with the other side. But I'm really happy with that. There's always someone you want to impress on Christmas day or you want to have the better dessert, don't you? See whose dessert gets eaten first and I think this dessert is it. Just saying, I am super excited to serve these on Christmas Day. They look really cute, they're easy to create, and you're going to be so impressed with the flavour. It's always important to taste test before serving on Christmas Day, so... They do say, never trust a skinny cook. If you enjoyed that episode, you will love my channel. Subscribe today for even more tutorials on chocolate and baking. Best of all, it's free, so get on it.